Today we're starting a multi-part series about Microsoft OneNote, the note-taking app that allows you to organise information into sections and then pages, much like a folder in a filing cabinet. It allows you to type, ink, draw, annotate, highlight, and all sorts of additional things that you can embed, like video and audio, and record yourself as well. So let's get stuck in. Today we're talking about Microsoft OneNote and because it's a massive topic we're going to start with images and inking. Let's go. Well OneNote is primarily a note-taking app. Notebooks are split up into sections like this and inside each section pages that can have a range of different content within them. You can embed things on a OneNote page, you can link out to other locations and this makes it really great for teaching. Here if I click on my notebooks list, you can see I have other notebooks that I can jump between, much like Word has documents, PowerPoint has decks, or Excel has workbooks. OneNote has notebooks. This is the OneNote for Windows 10 app, which looks very similar if you open it on an iPad or an iPod or an Android device or a Chromebook or a MacBook. Here's the browser version of OneNote, which you can see looks very similar. For this reason, it's a great choice to use in class. One of the purposes that it suits really well is as your class whiteboard app. Here, if I click on a blank page, we can see from the view menu, I get choices of different size ruled paper or grid paper. Sadly, not manuscript yet, but let's hope one day. I can also change the page color. And from here, I've got a draw menu as well, which lets me do the typical things that I expect to be able to do within a drawing program. As well as drawing, I've also got the sort of shape tools that I expect to see here. So this range of inking, text and page tools make it really easy to use OneNote as your whiteboard software. But what it does better than any is allow you to organise that content. Where the OneNote really comes into its own is how you can share it to learners. Well, there's a number of ways. And for that, we need to look at where OneNote lives. If you're not using Office 365 in your school, then you can open your own Microsoft account by going to OneNote.com. And this will let you either sign in or sign up for a Microsoft account, and then you can use OneNote for free. Your notebooks are then stored in your OneDrive. And when I click on one of them, it opens it in the browser version like this. And then if I click on Open in Desktop app, it then gives me a choice of which version I want to use. If you have Office 365 for your school, then you are likely already to have OneNote notebooks set up either through SharePoint or through Microsoft Teams. Whatever the version, remember OneNote now lives in the cloud. And when you're opening the app, you're caching a copy locally on your device. But it also means you can share it to others. So here from this share button, I can then add email addresses of my students and I could just send them a view only version with this adjustment. But if you have Office 365, now called M365, or Microsoft Teams in school, then likely your notebooks and Teams are already set up. So I've now got a whiteboard program that will open in the browser, will open in a range of apps, mobile devices, as well as the desktop on whatever device I'm using, and will also look the same on whatever my students or pupils open it on as well. And because it syncs back to the cloud, the changes I make on one version will update across all of them very quickly. So we've looked at how we can change the background effects with paper styles and different colours. There's a lot more we can do that will help with this though. Let's look at images. So here I've got a range of music related images to do with paper, to do with useful visual aids. How did I get these here? Well you can see they're objects, I can move them around, I can also resize them as I need to and that means that I can put them where it's useful. If I right click on any one of these I can set the picture as the background. And now that gets me around not having manuscript paper templates already available because now I can write on this because now I can use this just like I would on a normal piece of paper. Let's make some more space and zoom right in. And now if I choose an appropriate pen, now I can start to write like I normally would in class. Not bad with a mouse, but much better with a proper digital pen. So how do I get images onto this page? Well, I can copy and paste them. Also from the insert menu, I can insert pictures um, from images that I've already stored, from the camera on my device, or from online, I can search within OneNote 
using the built-in Bing search tool. Being able to make images into backgrounds is really useful. Here, if I look at this, I've set up a quick graphic score to use with early years children. Here, I've got a range of pitch-based graphic scores that I've built and also an image-based graphic score that I can annotate, point out, move between and have fun with too. There's also a range of other ways that I can get things into OneNote, one of which is to screen grab from other apps. Here I am in Microsoft Whiteboard. If I now choose to screen grab some of this content, I can take this straight to OneNote and paste it in there. Using the screen grab tool, I can insert pictures and screen grabs from anywhere else that I need to. Because I can share the notebook to learners, I can use this to build a digital and rich media library as well of information. You can see I can set up here a text that can be copied for learners to use elsewhere. I can use my draw tools to allow me to highlight and I can also leverage the value of rich media. Here I've pasted a YouTube link straight onto the page which you can see plays from the page, as well as a range of other images. Because OneNote pages do not run out, I can go in any direction I choose to, to expand the content. I can also place hyperlinks on the page, which will link out to other websites. Down here, you can see I've taken advantage of that manuscript tool, which I really should set as background. There we go, set picture as background. Now meaning that I can use those inking tools to make examples either in advance or as part of the lesson with the learners. There's very little that can't be stored or embedded on a OneNote page. Let's move down and have a look at this embedding documents page. Here you can see a PDF of the lyrics to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star have been placed on this page. And because when I dragged it onto the page, I have the option to either store the file on the page or print it to the page like this. A tool that we're going to be using a great deal more in the coming videos is in the insert menu and that is to insert audio. With the insert audio button, I can record from the microphone on my device straight onto the OneNote page as a MP3 recording. Here it is, now live recording what I'm saying. It's t date and time stamped it already for me, and you can see the seconds counting up as I go. Let me stop it now, and then I could play it back and I can move this file around quite separately to the page as well. More on this in the coming videos. So that audio recording facility can be incredibly useful on pages like this as well. This is great revision tool setup because I can use this later to play back what I thought was important at the time. Getting students into the habit of doing this kind of note-taking task is a really strong way to set themselves up for success. Next, we're gonna look at sharing files. So here on this sharing files page that I've made as an example, you can see I've got some examples set up looking at form in music. So something that's really good to help learners compose is to use forms that already exist. Here I've got a couple of songs that they're really familiar with, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Three Blind Mice, London's Burning. And actually using these structures and then part of the melody to help children start to compose is a really important way to give framework to what they're doing and not just give them that blank piece of paper that can be terrifying. So how have I done this? Well, you can see I've got three examples here and normally I just focus on one in a lesson and we go from there together. I just wanted you to see a choice of them. So if I now click on this version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I'll double click that file. It's now opening it in Finale Notepad. Finale Notepad is the free version of Finale's professional notation software. Let me go to view and change this to 200 straight away because that's a lot easier to deal with. And what I would do with students is teach them which of these menus they can hide and put away straight away because it's just too much to deal with when you're starting to learn how to use a notation software. But Finale Notepad is a good solution and I'm gonna cover this in a separate video as well. So here now, we can play this using the transport controls and we can annotate it here and look at it, but also using the screen grab tool. So here I can take a screen snip, and then you can see what I've done is I've pasted these snips onto the page as well. Then the next task might be here, use this template version that again can be double clicked and run straight from the page for learners to open their own. They'd be able to open it, work on it, and then they'd be forced to save their own version. So it's a really good file management tool that I'm just showing the example of Finale Notepad, but this works for absolutely all sorts of file types and it's really worth trying um, for yourself. I haven't found one that I can't get to save to the page yet. 
Let's go back and look at graphic scores in more detail. Here you can see I've pasted some pictures from Anthony Brown's The Tunnel and put in a table ready to start to annotate together. And we can do this together as a class. Children can do this in groups and we can invent our own graphic score system or writing shorthand that will mean the instruments and what's going to be played in these sections. Tables can work really well. Here's a table that I've put together for a rainforest journey graphic score. From the insert menu, there's the table tool that you can use that way to add cells and rows and columns. Here you can see I've just used the table shading tool to allow me to give it a little bit more clarity. This is something I can give to groups to go and do themselves, or we can do it together as a class. Tables have multiple purposes. So here, let's look at this rhythm strips task with graphic scores. Here you can see I can take some of the tools I've already made and we can put them into a graphic score as a class or individually. Here's a Kaherva pattern which works really well when you decide what the graphic symbols mean yourself. Again, because you can draw, you can always annotate on top of these things as a class. So I can move now to traditional notation very smoothly from the type of graphic scoring we were doing later. Let's look at this rhythm matching example page. Here you can say we've set up a task using Drumbot where they first of all need to study the sequencer example that's screen grabbed onto the page and then on their own version of the page recreate the rhythm that is already described. Then compose a hi-hat rhythm, open Drumbot and recreate it themselves. Then use the tool to form their own variation. If you know Drumbot, then it allows you to set up themes and variations by having different sections. This is an incredible tool. It's definitely worth going to drumbot.com going to and then clicking on the sequencer tool to have a look at it yourself if you've not before. And I'll link to it below as well. Then finally, using the OneNote tools, they can screenshot their version back into their notebook page and record the audio version back to the page as well of what they've done using the insert audio tool that we looked at earlier. In this way, you're getting a really good record of students' work. Here you can see we can do listening tasks based on structures in music. So let's drag a piece of music onto the page to see how this might work. So I'm going to make a bit of space here and then let's move this out the way. And over here, I've got Eye of the Tiger that I'm going to use. Kids love this, and it's got a really clear structure to it as well. So I've dragged it onto the page, and what do I want to do with it? It's only a megabyte, it's in size. I can upload it to OneDrive and put a link in, or I can insert it as an attachment. That's how easy it is to add files of audio types to OneNote as well. And now I can click on that file, and you can see the play tools come up as well as the audio menu up here as well. But we can also then make this a task for individuals by opening this page themselves. You can see I've started to set up the introduction for them and our lettering format. And then what I want them to do is to listen to it and continue this structure themselves. Here you can see I've got a tr another track ready, Firework, Gaty Perry, a really well-known track, and it's an, an embedded video, this time from ClickView, which is a really good educational content maker, and a PDF of elements of music that they can refer to to help them. So lots of resource on this page scrapbooked in here to see. And what I'm going to do this time is we're going to listen to the track. Here you can see the play tools come up and the audio tools as soon as I click on it. And then down here, rather than writing in this time, although we do want to make some notes about the instruments we hear at different parts of the songs, this time we're going to do graphs. So we can use the draw tools on our device that is a bit easier to use and move there, here we go. And this time if we're setting, here I've got this type of table that works really well. So we're gonna set a baseline volume for the dynamics at the beginning. And then we go into what we consider the second section. Then we're gonna think about, does it get louder? Well, actually, yes, it does. Equally, if I think about the texture of the music and how thick the sound is, let's go and get a different colour. This time we'll go for something a bit more exciting. Yeah, rainbow, let's do it. Down here, you can either digital ink or we could just go back to typing what we want to in this boxes as well. Equally, you can print this out and use it in class if you have to. You can print anything in OneNote if you want to from the print dialogue up the top there. 
So that's it for what are the introductory tools in OneNote to let you embed a range of content, use inking, use images, and draw all of that together to start to create some rich media content for learners. Well, I'm really excited because the following videos, we're gonna look at tools like embedding, even if they're not in the classroom with you. Following that, we're also gonna look at something called audio bookmarking, which is just the most incredible facility in OneNote, but also as a way to feed back to learners from things that they've done for you, which I'm just so excited to share. So I'll link to those on screen as well. What I'm gonna do now is link down below to the tools that we've used today and also to my course on Skillshare. So I have a course on Skillshare that is how to get up and running with OneNote. It's to take yourself from complete beginner with OneNote right through to be able to organize absolutely any part of your life and use all the tools on OneNote. It's massive, it's about two and a half hours all in, so you might wanna dip in and out of it. But the link below will give you two weeks of free access to Skillshare, which is more than enough to watch that course, as well as lots of the other brilliant courses that they have there. So that in the link below. I hope you've got value out of today. If you have, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing so that you get notified when new video contents arrived. There's a couple of videos appearing on the screen now, which will be the follow-ups to this, as well as anything else that might be useful to you. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Thanks for being here.